one could argue that DC Comics almost said things are starting to feel too normal. That's that's they were like we don't want things to ever be normal ever again. Let's change this. Let's do something about this. Now, here's the thing. So the big news this week, of course, is that DC is officially ending their partnership, uh, their relationship entirely even, with Diamond Comics, which is a distributor who, up until now, basically, distributed all of North America's comic books and has had a monopoly in the industry for about 20 or so years. Five. Uh, 25, 25 years. years. There you go. So... This is pretty big news. Now, it's not really surprising news in and of itself. I think the only surprising element of this is how quickly it's happened. I, th- I, th- I think we all kind of felt like DC were inching towards this over the last few months. There, there was a possibility that it was going to completely go back to normal, right? Um, because over the past few months, when Diamond were shut down, DC didn't like that. So they you know, started up some extra distributors to get their comics out to shops. There was a possibility once things did actually get back to normal that maybe things kind of just, oh, uh, well, these are the distributors fade away a little bit and we end up back with just Diamond. It, it was a possibility. Yeah, but there was always that kind of little suspicion that DC were kind of using this to finally do what they've been wanting to do for a while. And this news just only kind of maybe adds some credence to that. So. Yeah, we, we're going to have a world now where DC Comics do not distribute through, di- through Diamond, and this has a huge impact on retailers everywhere. Uh, you know, uh, mm-hmm. so, some, some just simple ways of how they order books, how much how expensive they cost. For those further international, it becomes an even bigger question of are these books even going to be viable to even import and sell anymore? So uh, there's a lot to kind of dig into here. And the reaction to this online from particularly retailers you know people who sell comic books has not been particularly positive <laughs> just shall we say retailers are, are, are a fickle bunch aren't they because they've spent at least a decade complaining about diamond of their monopoly mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. here you go oh no give us back diamond what, what the hell are you doing dc um i understand the um the frustration with the speed of it more than anything though because this is um, this goes into effect within ten days. They have um, from from when they, from when DC announced it on the Friday. They have ten days to set up their accounts with the other distributors, uh, so that they're not missing out on books because of the the where the final order cut off dates are. Yeah, I, I mean, I hate to be kind of I don't know mean to retailers here, but I feel like you're complaining just now. But once you're all used to ordering through this new system. In a few months' time, this is just going to feel like the new normal, and nothing's really going to matter that much anymore. Like, I, this is for North American retailers. For North American retailers, yes, which is typically who we're talking about when we're talking about comic book retailers, unless we specify otherwise. Yeah, I, I just I feel like yeah, it's a bit of a pain to move over, but like you said, all we have heard for the past decade is retailers. Maybe not every retailer. I mean, I'm not going to go through and like actually check who said what, but mm-hmm. just complaints after complaints of diamonds. Like, like quality of shipping, their inconsistencies, just to, uh, what the monopoly does to the, did, the system. Did you see how Diamond actually improved their um, quality of shipping over the last couple of weeks? They got <laughs> shown up by one of the other ones who like did like proper bubble wrap packaging on their boxes and everything, mm. which Diamond never do. And no. uh, obviously, They're this never... got out, and and retailers like, hey, Diamond, what the hell? You said this wasn't doable. And uh, yeah, all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, I guess we can do this as well. Yeah, the number of times that Diamonds had sent damaged books to my shop. The entire boxes. Was, the, yeah, the that's damaged. just... Yeah. And to me, it would be like, if that's your one job, is like the one thing that you're, you're uh, organizing your business around is distribution. You think you would take the most care in that I, one I, thing. That's the the beauty of this entire situation is up until now they didn't need to because right what were the stores going to do order from someone else no right. co- competition is good and i think what's frustrating about the reactions to this while i do see there's potential problems and there's obviously going to be a lot of growing pains and other things is that they've been begging for change for years but clearly the thought of actually having to go through the the effort of the change itself is just so like daunting to ask most retailers that they just don't want to do it. That, that now they're just complaining that they have to. It's not just a comfortable same normal they're used to doing every month. And yeah. 
maybe the time is not great. Maybe doing this right after every, everywhere's been closed for a couple months is maybe the worst possible time. Uh, or maybe it's the best possible time because everyone's up in right. upheaval anyway. And, and uh, yeah, can um, I read a quote from a retailer here? Oh, go for this it. Is, uh, so, you know, it, it was a gut punch after we just reopened our doors for the first time in two months. Understandable. Because as most retailers, I'm not going to cut off my nose to spite my face. I'll order for my regulars the minimum for racks, but I'm not putting any significant resources in their future projects. Isn't that what you should have been doing anyway? Yeah. Like, comics as an industry, you know, a, a comic store has razor thin margins. We've talked about this before. Uh, most stores cannot afford to have tons of stuff just sitting on the shelves that do nothing. Ordering for your regulars, a little bit for the racks, that's exactly what most smart businesses should be doing in this scenario. Right. Well, yeah. and then a part of it was, though, too, is that I, was, I wasn't collecting comics in the 90s, but I hear the horror stories, and, you know, where, where they were doing the gimmicky covers and this, that, and the other, and it was just everything was, it was a bubble that popped. And it seemed, at least from my shop, Trying to get those exclusive covers where you had to order X amount to get that seemed to be counterintuitive for what they needed to do. Like, I remember when Forever Evil, was it Forever Evil? I think it was Forever Evil came out and they had like the one in 100 cover, right? He couldn't sell it because no one wanted to buy this cover, so he gave it away in a raffle, right? And then he had 100 issues, you know, maybe not 100, let's say 50 extra issues of forever evil one or whatever issue it was just sitting there yeah you know? and that's that's um why those sorts of variants are traditionally priced so high is yeah a store if if they only need 50 copies total but they, it's a one in 100 well they have to order 50 extra copies that they don't think they're right. going to sell so they have to sell that variant at 50 times right. the yeah price well to make the, up the, for it. the whole point of that though is that you have someone you know wants to buy it before you make your order you have someone who specifically requests right. i want that cover so okay, and like, okay fine well this is what it's going to cost if we have to order it right right and so now i can definitely see them getting away from that and then it'll actually instead of speculators pumping up the market it'll actually be that's what that book's worth right because you had to order 100 of them so again I don't see too much as a consumer, as long as my shop that is is going to get physical DC books. If not, I'm going to have a problem. Like, I mean, well, so, that's the point where you find a new shop, find yeah. your mail order from somewhere. Yeah. Right? So, some some shops are obviously are claiming they're not going to support DC anymore. I mean, we'll see. If the customers want the things, they're going to get no, the yeah. things. This is this is the thing issue. If you say, "Oh well, we won't buy it," you know, we we won't buy it to sell it. You know, as a as a retailer, then. Fine, your customers will order it from somewhere else. If they want those books, they will get them. Yeah, it, it's it's yeah. I because I saw another. Uh, it's one of the one you posted actually. Uh, I don't know who said this, but it was something to do with the uh, the wrong side of history, right? Something about mm -hmm. being on the wrong side of history. And it was uh, you know to, uh, those who ignore history are doomed to repeat it. And there this you was go. From the, uh, image uh, publisher Eric Stevenson said that yeah yeah and i feel like that is supposed to be something that's saying hey dc marvel tried to be right independently this in the 90s and it didn't work it almost put them under and i feel like yeah but like are, are we praising the idea that there was a monopoly do we want that monopoly to keep being a monopoly i don't think we do i don't think we've ever wanted that really no but back in the 90s they didn't have day and day digital comics either that's also true i mean yeah so there's a whole, a whole market avenue so different and I get that they're scared and whatnot. And I don't, I, I don't understand the publishing side, like how much it costs them or them going with two companies versus just the one, how much that's going to cost a shop more or whatever. But I did see a thing from one of someone talking about it. One of the real retailers saying that DC has broken it up to where like the West coast, they want to order from one of the, distributors yeah. and east coast from the other which seems to me now they're streamlining and they're trying to help this along so it's not like they're making it from my point of view they're not making it that difficult now is it going to cost more to ship through this one company you know than yeah, anyone else DC but i i don't put know out a q a and um on that they actually said um you, uh west coast and canadian retailers should use luna and east coast mm -hmm. should use ucs uh Mainly because that will maximize the shipping times because of where they're located. Right. So it will just be quicker for you. Right, hubs. Yeah, yeah. makes yeah. sense. So, um, but yeah, so 
I, my shop owner had gone on record saying that he didn't want to order from two different. But now if DC's not giving him the choice, I also can't see him going like, well, I'm not going to order DC now. It's going to be like, well, I'll just order less because the wall of unsold comics from DC versus Marvel, like there's a whole wall of the back issues of, of DC versus a half of a wall for, for Marvel. And, and then the other half of that one wall is Indies. So I don't know if there's going to change his business model, uh, business model or what. But I, I know mean, he's been ordering less comics. He's been ordering too many DC comics. Yeah, right? So, um, yeah, I, I don't know where it's going to go. As long, again, I know it sounds selfish, but as long as I can keep getting my physical books there, which I'm already cutting significantly, right? Like, I'll, I'll be okay. Yeah. Uh, no, it's it's brave new territory, and I, I, I think everyone. I think the complain about it is this reactionary thing that feels a little bit strong, mm-hmm. even though it, it there is some you know interesting wrinkles to this. Like, how does this affect international? Where yeah, can we can we talk about that a minute? Because I, I don't know if people are familiar with the the international situation, especially over here in the UK and and uh, a lot of Europe. I uh, think you could probably, probably just have to say the LCD the Atlantic, really, uh, in terms of what this affects. Yeah, yeah, probably. Um, but generally speaking, um, over here it's all done through uh, Diamond UK, uh, which is still obviously part of Diamond, but it's its own independent branch. Uh, but DC will not be using them either, by the sounds of it. Uh, and they have a you know they have a hub here in in the UK that that services here around a lot of Europe because they're close enough to do so. And the idea is all the stores order through them, uh, all the shipping costs go through to Diamond UK. It's all air freight, you know, packaged into one load over to one distribution hub and then sent out across from there, which significantly cuts down uh, shipping charges for any individual store. Um, but now uh, one store has said their belief, as again, as of Friday evening, this could change, is that instead of getting their, you know, their standard discount that they get, um, from Diamond, uh, and then however much they pay for shipping from them, they typically paid about sixty to sixty-five percent of the cover price. So that left, you know, roughly thirty-five to forty percent as profit. Uh, whereas now, once they're adding the shipping for this new system, it's going to be they're going to be paying over the cover price already, just for just to import it and get it in the store uh, for just DC Comics. So they're like, well. These prices are going to have to almost double uh, for us to have the same profit margin. Yeah, I mean, basically, one of two things will happen here: either DC is going to decide they care about the other side of the planet in terms of their single physicals, the physical singles, I may say, mm-hmm. uh, and they'll ensure something is set up to make it feasible. Because obviously, what you described there is not feasible. If if single issue comics have to double in price then that's it. DC singles are dead. Physical singles, that is, are dead they on are. The, I think the side of the planet. They're just, they're, they're gone. Honestly, what would be a very viable solution, if they wanted to avoid Diamond, which they clearly do, is team up with another established distributor over here. Uh, Panini springs to mind. They do a lot of um, over here, Mar- Marvel stuff specifically, they do a lot of like uh, Marvel paperback trades mm. uh, for bookstore market, but also they actually have rights. They have they already have agreements with Marvel and DC for single issues. Uh, those those are the company that print the new store reprints that we get sometimes over here. You'll find them in like WH Smith, so your news agents. It'll be usually a collection of two or three issues from six to 12 months ago. Uh, and they'll just kind of do like anthology reprints like that. Um, so obviously most people don't collect them like that because that's a horrible way to, to read them. Um, but the fact is they already have, uh, you know, they already have deals and agreements with this company. They already have distribution countrywide set up. Uh, it, maybe that's something that DC will look into. Yeah, maybe. Because, uh, I mean, obviously it doesn't affect the trades because, I mean, trades and stuff already go through book channels anyway. I mean, not all, obviously comic book shops have begun getting them through Diamond, but... You know, Amazon, all these different places, yeah. they, they get them from traditional places anyway. Com- comic shops had the option to get them through Diamond or through uh, Penguin Random House, is what DC are using. And they've been using them for a couple of years anyway, so this isn't like new, but now it'll just be yeah. exclusively through Penguin Random House. So I don't think most stores 
will have too much of a problem with that. Yeah. I mean, even, even if comic stores didn't sell DC trades anymore, like trades being in Europe isn't going to be an issue. That's still the same as kind of what it always has been. Yeah. It's the singles that, that could potentially be changing dramatic, dramatically. Here. And there's a chance that DC might decide that it's just not worth the effort. Like, whatever physical singles they actually sell, that, you know, some people will, will switch to digital, some people will switch to trades, and they're willing to just kind of take that hit. And the percentage in the middle of those two camps that just stop reading altogether, maybe they're willing to just leave that it's, behind. Um, it's a lot of money to lose, because uh, the UK alone is 15 to 20% of the entire comics market when it comes to you know print singles yeah and over here traditionally we have a higher proportion of dc readers than marvel um just uh, <laughs> due to what was available no no just due to what was available like 20 years ago during the distributor wars those um the, the DC, dc had a big advantage over here in that time uh so a lot of people grew up with more dc available than marvel and that has kind of just filtered through over the years especially in those older readers or just better taste that's, that's, that's probably possible i mean no that, that's, that's possible but i mean there just are put out there. like genuine reasons that you can point at and go there are this is why there is a higher market share in the uk for dc i'll put it this way i feel like i have met tons of people from the uk who grew up in batman the animated series but have never seen the x-men or spider-man cartoons that, that uh, yeah that's also true yeah i have i have encountered that repeatedly uh, including myself, I, I should point out. Uh, so, uh, I don't know, just it's a DC place. <laughs> it's a DC kind yeah. of place. Uh, yeah, so whatever happens, it's, it's definitely big stuff. And, you know, we'll see how this, this this develops over time. Obviously, that means that DC are officially staying on Tuesdays. Now, I, I imagine a lot of comic book stores are still going to wait until Wednesday just because it's just easier for them out, yeah. Yeah, to, to have it all in one big batch rather than... I mean, even if they're getting them in separate days... It's just easier for them for stock reasons to just put them out in the same release day. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, so I don't know. It's it, just... it was a uh, was notable that DC dropped this news on a Friday, where they don't have to answer any questions about it now till Monday at the earliest. <laughs> Hopefully, I think their intention is is hoping some people might you know calm down a little bit over the weekend. Uh, not sure if that'll actually be the case or not. But... It's a tried and true method, really. Uh... It is. I know um, like my own store has addressed it on Twitter very vaguely. You know, they've been asked, oh, hey, so is this going to affect you guys with this? And they've just said, stay tuned, because I don't think they know yet, is, yeah. is the honest answer. I, I, I wouldn't imagine they would know yet. I, I, I think it boils to, at least for stores in the US and North America, I think it boils down to the fact that if, if you've got a customer who is more DC focused, right, and their pull list is either mostly or all DC, uh, looking at Matt here, <laughs> um, then I mean are these people going to look at their, all their customers and go okay so that's like say half of my customers who m mainly buy DC comics am I willing to lose all those customers because that's essentially the choice they're going to be making if they want to be stubborn and not switch mm -hmm. over to the new distributor so yeah and, and you would think that would hurt more than just going through the effort of setting it up and mm-hmm like I said, I think it's shitty that they've only got 10 days to set up these accounts. If they didn't set them up beforehand, if they decided they were just going to wait for Diamond, right? Um, they've got 10 days to, to get everything ready to go because, it, you know, it, you, it was going to be this Monday's final cutoff, but DC were like, look, we accept that three days isn't really enough time, so we'll give you an extra week. We'll we'll push the final order cutoff for those books back a week. Honestly, what they, I mean, again, it's more the execution of how they're, they're doing this rather than the, the, the idea itself. But yeah, what would have been probably better say, hey, in three months, like we're ending our relationship with Diamond. So, you know, basically all the new solicits coming out, like you, all those orders, you're going to have to go through a new system. But that would be a lot of time to like have the shops have a time to transition over. You know, maybe even switch some of their orders before then if they want to just sort of like do a later month with a new distributor and kind of see how it goes. And I, I don't know, whatever. But there, there could have been more of a transitionary period. Whereas this is kind of a no, you've got a week and a bit to just completely shift everything over. Uh, so Yeah. Uh, and you, uh, customers will be seeing this difference in their stores by roughly start of July, I think. Um, so, you know, so it. Uh, the, the relationship with Diamond is coming to a close following Diamond's distribution of product offered on DC's final order cutoff list of June 1st. And they're usually about a month in advance. Mm. 
so yeah we'll be seeing these effects very soon and we'll see you know what this does to like i don't know will dc sell more books this way will they sell less books will will this hurt the sales of other books because they're not yeah uh, I, I think what's fascinating is we might not know because diamond are very transparent in some ways with their sales figures well i want to go to my next point though what if like are we going to see a reduction in other books though because customers who typically buy dc and then they'll pick a few other things up if they're not either in the same day because the books are on a different day or if they're just not going to that store anymore like do we see a reduction in like marvel sales figures because some dc fans who buy a few marvel books are no longer there that day yeah <laughs> uh, it's possible but I, I i don't know how big an effect that'll have i think you know, with, with the sales figures i think it's notable that Diamond are transparent, but not for their own good, more because it forces, you know, DC and Marvel to to try and outdo each other. And that's good for Marvel. Uh, oh, that's good for Diamond because, well, hey, it's more orders through us, right? More mm. more, more money for us. Um, without this, I mean, that, I've seen speculation. This is part of the reason why DC's done it in that Marvel go out of the way so much to ape the numbers with variants and all sorts so that they're consistently the top of the the uh, the charts and the sales figures right they're, 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 i'd say probably eight or nine months out of, out of the year they come in number one in well, with the book there's, and e- they there's tend even to have that bigger market share there's even the conspiracy that for some reason whenever marvel's not a number one book it takes a week extra for the sales figures to come out for some reason is that as if they demand a recount when they're not number one i mean it's interesting that you say it's a conspiracy i think what, what the reasoning might be a conspiracy but it does seem to line up Oh yeah, like I, I, I say that because it's kind of like almost so ridiculous that it's worth saying it's a more of a joke. But it does actually line up when you look at when the, the sales figures come out each month. It always seems to line up wherever there's a Marvel bit number one. It's that week earlier. Whenever it's not, it's a week later. Yeah, and so there is some speculation that DC did this so that they don't have to publish their numbers through you know, these other uh, companies. And they don't have to have the headlines every month of Marvel has best Marvel uh, market share again, you know, Marvel top sales figures list. And they don't have to seem like they're being beaten every single month. Mm. That could, that could be a, that could, that could be a big part of it. Uh, the, the image sort of, you know, the public image of it. Yeah. Uh, nah, so yeah, interesting stuff, interesting times ahead. Uh, obviously we'll keep an eye on, however this progresses obviously th- this may affect how you get your books if you're still buying them physically and many of you of course are so we'll see how it goes it's, it's kind of funny that i almost started going physical again right before the outbreak happened and then everything since has basically been like yeah you don't want to do that <laughs> yeah yeah i'm, I'm really concerned I, I uh I, I love my shop and i uh, i'd say probably about half of my overall pull list with my store is dc books Mm-hmm. But if they end up having to double the price of them, I'm just not going to be able to afford that. No, I, I, even, uh, no matter how much you like the books, pay, paying going from three fifty to seven pounds for a single issue comic, which for the record is almost enough for most like smaller trades at that point, like uh, <laughs> especially well, an image first trade. Yeah, yeah, and I and I love DC, but if that was if I was in Connor's shoes, then it, um, that's my sign to go strictly digital. Yeah, you know, right. I, and I, this I, is where I really pay a premium on my books in my store versus digital which i don't mind because you know it's, it's right. not a huge amount it's, it's like maybe five percent at most but it's like right. okay I, i'm happy to pay well, that for my store but, and, and this reminds me too when the comics hub news is going around and it was like well if they can get the the publishers to play ball i think this helps everybody right like there's a there's a way to do it i want if, actually if they just want to try you know I wonder if the reason, part of the reason why that maybe fell through, and let's say DC was a holdout and said they didn't want to do it, I wonder if part of that is because they knew they were separating or they were going to try and yeah. separate. That's part of what stores are quite annoyed about, is that um, all of their point-of-sale software, all their data entry stuff, mm-hmm. uh, all their orders, is all the software for that, like, such as Comics Hub, is just designed around Diamond's system. It's all inputted direct from that. So without this now, they've got to do it all manually, and it's like twice as, two or three times as much work for some of them. Yeah, uh, I mean, for well, now, I have to imagine Comic Hub will be, I mean, sure, it'll be annoying for them for the next couple of weeks, but I assume they're going to be updating their system to incorporate this other I pair would, of services. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I wonder if that is part of why 
DC said no is because with with comics up everything was run through you know diamond system and DC mm. were like well we're not going to be there much longer so let's not right. get too hasty on this. I mean that makes more sense like if you're if your conspiracy hat on, right? That that stuff seems to line up. I mean I've seen all know. sorts of conspiracies around this like um, apparently this is the reason Didio uh, yeah left. that one so he didn't want anything to do with this and he didn't want to. He didn't want to have to be the, the the man out there that was the face of this move, and he was like, "I'm not dealing with this flack. You're on your own." Yeah. See, I just I don't see outside like I don't know, maybe because I'm looking through with rose colored glasses. Um, I don't see the flack before it happens. Like if this happens and it's a mess, then I could see it, but I don't know. I think it's retailer uh, retailers are the ones who are quite annoyed by this. Most consumers are. Either unaware, uninterested, or think that oh great, we're breaking up the monopoly. I'm sure, so, uh, sure you do more. I'm so well, happy. I'm so happy to listen to this podcast. Then if they're all either unaware or uninterested, I, I, said most, <laughs> not I mean, there, there I know, are obviously people who are listening to this who care. Yeah. But. So like, it, it was telling you too that when my my shop shut down and they put up a virtual storefront, it was to sell magic cards, and and to keep that part of their business up and running. And it wasn't the comics. So, like, again, I understand if you're a comics first shop, you know, you're not part of one of the larger chains and this, like, creating a headache for you. But I saw a lot of people, a lot of retailers talking about, oh, this is going to mess up my entire comic section. I was like, well, I don't, I doubt comics are getting you through. You know, I feel like it's everything else you're selling that's making the, the big chunk of it. So, and then there's the other conspiracy, too, that, this is DC trying to pull out of weekly comics. Oh, and yeah. There's to they go to, to trade first. Entirely. That, which I think is a stupid argument. Doesn't make sense. If, yeah. they, if they wanted to pull out of single issues entirely, which let's let's take that, that as, at face value for just for a second mm-hmm. for the sake of this argument. Why do they go through the effort of setting up two whole new distributors to do this? Would, Why not just sense. go, all right, screw it. Well, we've got Penguin and yeah. House. They're doing our trades. We're good. Also, their singles right. have been doing pretty well pretty the last few years yeah. like they've been very consistent if not rising a little bit so yeah this yeah. all goes back to rumors and hearsay that um that uh, warner bros and at&t executives yeah. have been saying that oh it seems like too much effort there's too much deadlines and editorial and you know it, it's all this it's not enough of a profit margin and we're not sure if it's worth the effort involved and i'm like ah, if it's making the money i don't see it and also i think we've spoken about this before just the uh the value in having it of the, the, the IP creation house for adaptations. Yeah. yeah, I feel like every so often we get one of these these rumors, these insane rumors of like, oh, is this all folding? Uh, it's, it's the same with, um, there's, other, there's other rumors like this for other things where, oh, is this the end of, of this thing? Is this, like, I know, are Microsoft giving up on consoles? I'm sure that was a thing at some point when they were doing not so hot at the start of the Xbox One generation. Like, you know, there, there was... Yeah, was like, of course they're not. They had, they had yeah. one bag generation, right? Yeah. So it's just... This that's kind of the fear mongering. That's kind of what your your comic gated places will start posting because that's what they love the, the Don't drama. Say that word. The headlines. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I, I finally know. understand from Harry Potter why they didn't say Voldemort's name. I get it. Like for the longest time, I thought it was like, yeah, and like and and like I get it because I was always like on Hermione's side, going like it's just a word, it's just a name. But when after you've seen the ugliness attached. It's just better to talk around it, and I finally get it. Um, mm. Yeah. Yeah. That would be really great to talk about the all the stuff going on in the world right now, but I just wanted to uh, bring up one anecdotal thing. Uh, did anyone see the, the clip of Batman showing up at one of the protests? Uh, I think it was in Philadelphia. And the only reason why I'm bringing this up is because A, because the suit looked really good, but it legitimately looked like it was B-roll from, like, you know the Dark Knight Rises when he's going up to fight Bane in the streets? Mm-hmm. It legit Because of the the, the, the the smoke and the tear gas or whatever it was in the air, right. it legitimately looked like that moment in that movie. I um, I haven't seen this. I know there is a guy in the US, I think he is in Philadelphia, so this is maybe why it's triggering bells, that um, he, he's, like, a you know a reasonably rich guy who has, like, a really high-quality looking bat suit, and he has, like, a Batmobile, <laughs> and he drives around with, like, cancer kids and stuff. Yes. Um, which is why, so I think that is... is Plausibly, that same guy. Matt, he's fulfilling wishes. Why are you, why are you shaking your head at it? <laughs> because he's a rich guy that thinks he's Bruce Wayne. That's Wait, it. He's not actually fighting crime. He's going and giving kids with cancer riding the yeah, Batmobile. He's showing up to some of the stuff that's going on. I uh, I don't know, man. It was it made for a visual. 
Image for a visual is all I'm going yeah. to say. Uh, so, but uh, yes, I haven't yes. seen it. I'm, I'm going to quickly search uh, yep. on on Twitter for that. That said, uh, oh, my, yeah. my dear old my, my dear old dad sent me some new masks. They finally got here from wherever he ordered them from, and they're remarkably Bane esque. So, with the state of the world, it was only a matter of time. Yeah. You know. Why not? If you're going to wear a mask, you might as well go Bane. Yeah. This makes sense. told me it was Golden Knights, and it showed up, and it was Rams. Not at all the same, not even the same sport. So either they bait and switched my dad, or dad was a little tipsy when ordering and clicked the wrong team. So, um, which is entirely plausible. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess. Uh, so... But uh, not to treat this too lightly, though, I'll just make this very clear at the end of this little segment. Black Lives Matter. The end. We're moving on. That's right. Uh, so one bit of news I think we have to uh, also mention, it's not as big obviously from an industry point of view, but extremely annoying for my purposes, because let me tell you what I do every week, folks. Every week for, for this show, I... <laughs> why, is, why, why is Matt taking his headphones off? Is this... <laughs> I'm confused by this. You will yeah. listen to this, Matt. What are you doing? How are you done? I'm just going to tell them about the, 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 the certain purchase that happened this week, a certain transition... That happened uh, in the interwebs. Right. Uh, so every week for this show, when I'm getting the news, I, I go to Newsarama, I click on the comics tab, and I go to news. And I just go back through the week and pick out the relevant things. I can't do that anymore. Because Games Radar have purchased, or whatever, comics, uh, or uh, Newsarama. So I think they purchased them a while ago, but this is just the them in- officially folding them into that family, yes, that the, website. The integration of... so. So this is annoying for several reasons. One of all, all of their old articles are just gone. So I tried to look up the solicits for April uh, to get some images for like thumbnails or whatever, mm-hmm. like uh, earlier in the week. No, nope, uh, not yeah, there anymore. Some, uh, like over the years, Newsarama have produced some fantastic interviews, some fantastic think pieces. Um, gone. Yeah. Uh, and if they do exist in any way, they are not the same links. Maybe, maybe you can find them somehow buried somewhere in a new format, but they're not available uh, via the old links and yeah honestly the site's horrible to new- use and the reason why i can't u- use the news section anymore is because when you go to uh, show more news it just mixes in all the movies and video games and tv shows with the comics so it's completely useless for actually quickly it's, getting the comic it's news because it has like an all news section which fine if that's what you want it's got a video game section and it's got a movie and tv section it does not have a comic section if it had a comic section i would not would I be complaining? I think, I, yeah. think the, uh, yeah. I, I despise Games Radar any, anyway. Anytime I search for something in general and I click on it, and I don't look at what I'm clicking on, I just see, oh, the headline, that's what I want. That's, uh, I click on it and it's a Games Radar link. And it comes up with, uh, oh, you're using an ad block. Uh, pay us this much per, per week to, to, to get rid of this message or to set all no. your whitelists in your ad blocker. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. And I did, there's no way to get rid of this box. It's just, no, you can't use the site once this pops up. Yeah, um, no, it's just it's a clunky site. It, it reminds me of you know this happens every so often on the internet. I remember I used to use a great DVD cataloging site called DVD Spot, and then some of the bigger one of the bigger websites bought it, and it just completely went to shit. Uh, sometimes it's just a redesign, like Box Office Mojo. I hate how that looks and feels now. It's just I mean it still works, but it's much more clunky to use. It's every so often this happens to a website that's really useful, and it just gets eaten alive by something else, and it turns into a it's... pile of shit. It's funny how purchase acquisitions tend to go one of two ways, in my experience. You have this way where they completely fold it into their own brand and just be like, this is our, our thing now, and it's completely unrecognizable to what it was before, which news around. Mm-hmm. Or you have what's happened with Comixology and Audible before it, where they're purchased by Amazon, and there is absolutely no, no progress whatsoever in any features after that takeover. It's just completely halted. They don't want to actually pump any resources into making it better. They're just like, however we were, we got it when we bought it, that's it for good now. Uh, to a fault. Where, um, to a fault, yeah. but it's better than the other option. <laughs> no, it is. But like, there, are, there are so many easy quality of life updates that could yeah. be done for, for Comixology or, or Audible, which has been going on even longer. That's been like a decade since Amazon bought yeah. that. And nah, just completely untouched. They, they could do with maybe, uh, you know, evolving it a little bit just for ease of use but uh, i'll take i'll take leaving it untouched over we're going to bastardize it and make it unusable yeah do you know one of my one of my 
most annoying features on Comixology. Yeah. It's, if you're in your own your own library and you want to, uh, this is on the desktop specifically. I'm not sure if it applies on a on the mobile devices. Um, if you're in your library, there's a bar to search your books, and you can you know start typing. Mm -hmm. However, it will only find things that match the start. So if you if you're looking for a Batman book and you type bat, that's that's great. But if you're looking for a Superman book, and it's the Adventures of Superman is, is the is the series that you're actually looking for. It won't show up unless you search for adventures. Huh. And it's like, why? Just if I search Superman, just show me all the things for Superman. In. This I, is easy thing. Uh, yeah, I mean that's fair. I, I I typically just click on the letter and just I'm I'm just used to I'm just I, I'm used to knowing which which comic books are. Yeah, but what. sometimes I I just don't know what i want to read and i'm like well i just want something with i just want to read a superman book in my library so what have i got available yeah. and I'll, I'll go and look and it's it's just like well that's, this isn't all my superman books no nah, no nah, nah. plus he'll accidentally hit his hentai section of his collection and that's for a different mood well i'm coming solidly i don't know do that sell hentai i have no idea <laughs> i'm gonna go on a limb and say no comic solidly not sell hentai i'm not into this weird technical stuff uh <laughs> massive big fan clearly uh so uh yeah. that, that basically wraps up the news so uh we'll see how dc not been with diamond anymore pans out uh i hate this newsarama development it is awful it, it stings as well because there isn't any other good uh oh yeah they're all gone dedicated news site anymore this newsarama was the last one yeah carbon resources became a, a pile of shite years ago oh there, there was a a great one like so a couple of weeks ago, they had they, uh, there was a the meme headline generator that went around. That was funny. What was even better was yeah. just last week, where they were they said a headline about something in the last issue of Venom, I think it was, oh. and Donny Cates, the writer of that book, retweeted this headline and went, "I don't even know what they're referring to." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds right. That um, sounds right. Yeah, I on Reddit, someone posted a bunch of back issues of of wizard and i said i really miss these guys right now which i never thought how is it that I'd print, nostalgic comics, for. print journalism is is more well archived than digital now thanks yeah, to this news right? around so like i found out about a lot of comic stuff because there was a while where i didn't have access to a comic shop so all the news that i got for comics came through wizard so that once a month when it would you know show up at my house in the mail it was like i, I understand when people get excited over the previews Mm. Right, because it was along the same kind of lines. Mm. Uh, that's how I found out of Jeff Johns and uh, even Kevin Smith writing comic books and whatnot, like all through Wizard. And now I think about the the people coming up right now. How are they going to figure this stuff out? I mean, you know, I, if they don't I, have a comic shop to go to, it's it's just like a gamble. I mean, I'm assuming that Solicis will still go to this new Zorama. It's just all the old ones are, are just gone. You can't find them, mm -hmm. even last months. Yeah, I'm assuming so. Uh... It's more just there is no dedicated hub for no. comics news anymore, which which sucks. Someone needs to I, step up. Yeah, if I had the time to just start a comic book uh, news website, I'd totally do it. But I do not have the time for that. So uh, someone else is going to have to take the take the reins and <laughs> go go and start a new comic book website that just gives me the news in a nice format that's easy to find. It's all I want. And you know, they, they can do you know interviews, think pieces, yeah, whatever. Yeah, sure, sure. Like oh, by all means, do those, but. Don't don't give us clickbaity headline articles like CBR, for example. Don't just give us unsubstantiated gossip like <laughs> certain other site. I, I can almost see a headline from this this Catwoman issue we're going to talk about. Like someone knocked up Catwoman. You'll never guess who the father is. Uh huh. Five people it could be, and five people it could not be. <laughs> <laughs> Catman's gonna be on that list just because of the names. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. and, and here's the thing: those CBR headlines have given me a lot more joy in the last couple weeks, just because it seems like they embraced the meme of the generator. So, like, so much that Donny Cates is like, I don't even know what they're talking about, and I wrote the damn thing. So, <laughs> like, yeah. I just, I, I love that. <sighs> Yeah, number one will be Catman, and then, then it'll just completely change mm -hmm. gears, and number two will be, I don't know, 
uh, Jafar from Aladdin. I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs>